So he is uh, owned by um, Ali Croft. Um, Rebecca's been riding him for about 18 months now. He was reserve uh, national champion elementary horse at the Nationals this year. He's been out, done some mediums. But once we sort of start to get to that level with him, we're, we're always training a little bit ahead. So he's actually started sort of a lot of his training towards the small tour now, because um, it takes so long to train a horse um, to that level, and it takes a lot of mental and physical ability. So we have to start quite young at sort of, sort of just dropping in pieces of knowledge. So he's sort of working at, um, working sort of towards the Priest and George level. So we're gonna bring him in. Um, I'm gonna hopefully incorporate with Peter a little bit, sort of a bit of a judge's point of view around the advanced medium level. Um, the, I'm gonna bring another horse as well for that session. And I think I'll um, bring in Rachel. Um, and have, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the warm up um, from a rider's point of view, from a veterinary point of view, just to give a little bit of an insight. Cause obviously no advanced horse is young. So they lose sort of that natural suppleness and things. So the warm up becomes more and more important, but it's also um, warming up for the sport we do. So there's certain muscles that they need to warm up. There's certain muscles we have to wake up. So it's just sort of working through that and hopefully we can make it um, interesting. So I decided to bring Bray Linker. I'm actually doing it more for myself because she's not actually that experienced in those sort of environments. So I thought, you know what, this would be perfect to sort of bring her in. So, but I'm gonna bring her along. Um, and even though she's obviously an established Grand Prix horse um, and you've been competing very well at that level, the, a lot of the work we do, a lot of the sort of the exercises we do are very much in line with the small tour work. Um, they're sort of the exercise we do to step them up into Grand Prix. So I'll be able to explain a little bit sort of how we do that and then connect up a bit to the small tour to the beginning of the Grand Prix and then Emil can finish it off with the last session. Well, it's, it's incredibly important um, because I, I'm basically the shop window um, and there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. and. Um, for me, it's bringing in the people who are good at what they do. I'm not a farrier. I can look at feet and go, I like that or I don't, but I'm not a farrier. So, you know, I try and bring in, you know, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best farriers. I've got some of the best vets, the nutritionists through Bailey's. You know, right down to the surfaces and stuff we ride on, but tack, you know, the, the saddles, the, the, the saddle cloths, the boots or bandages, the bridles, the bits, ev everything. And, and these days, um, it's all about sort of maybe changing things a degree or not, you know, and everything, these horses now are bred to be, I think the thing is these days, the horses are bred to be so athletic and so sensitive that actually tack, um, the feed, everything like that becomes even more and more important um, because they are, we want them to be sensitive when we ride, so hence they're sensitive to everything else that is actually connected to them. So it is really, really important. And it's also for me, I need to be able to concentrate on what I do, I ride. So when I'm riding, I need to do that. You know, I have my head girl, Steph, who's been with me for 15 years. You know, she's, she runs my yard um, amazingly well. You know, it's up to her then. She, she sort of, everything goes through, through me, but you know, it's up to her to sort of look at the day-to-day -day care. But we try and bring in everybody that is really good at their job. We all work together. I mean, it's really great, the team I've got with the nutritionist to, to the farrier, to the vet. We all work really, really closely. Um, and it makes, uh, quite a stressful, high pressure thing, job, easier, you know, if you've got these people to fall back on because, um, you know, sometimes just a phone call makes a huge difference. The main thing to always remember is why we got into them. And I ride horses because I love horses. I happen to be a dressage rider. Um, and it's very easy, you know, when you get to the high level sport, um, there's, there's, there's a lot of pressure, you know, from, from outside sources, you know, whether it be sort of owners or your country, if you're representing your country, there's a lot of money involved, horses are worth a lot of money. Um, so it's very difficult sometimes um, to lose sight of that. So um, it's a good reality check, always sit back and think, actually, why do, we, why do we do this? And then how lucky we are to be able to, to have and work with horses like this. So, um, you know, the system I have, I've been training with Carl for about 15 years now, so my system is obviously very much aligned with his. Um, and so it's, 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 it's about keeping it simple because when it gets hard, it gets very complicated. So if you make the easy stuff difficult, the hard stuff becomes impossible. So it's always about simplifying it, um, being true to yourself, you know, how do you want to ride? How do you want to train? You know, not get caught up in sort of, you know, these quick fixes and things like that. Um, and giving the best care and attention we can to our horses. Perfect. Well, that sounds pretty, pretty awesome to me. Um, so just a few weeks to go, mm -hmm. we will see you on 24th, 25th of yep. November at Hartbury College. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it too.